social distancing. I'm Pastor Frank Turgia from Family Worship Center. It's a Sunday we're having church and praise God uh, for your uh, joining join in with us and uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to follow the policy that's been given to us and, and so we're going to go on with the things of God. The praise and worship team is going to sing some songs. I hope you, you can see the words and uh, join, join in with us. Let's all stand up.
Praise God. Amen. Amen. Another song. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now that we have more people in the church, now it won't sound like I'm singing by myself. <laughs>
some all over the United States. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Not just on Sundays, I think every day yeah. you ought to yeah. sing this song and tell that virus it has to leave in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Praise yeah. God. Depression has to leave when you sing this song. Yeah. Oppression yeah. has to leave. Yeah. Fear yeah. has to leave. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, nothing but the love of God can come out of this son and what he's prepared for us and what he's given us through his son and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Thank God, praise and worship team. That was a good song. That was a good song. Praise God. I'm on the wrong side. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God. God's a good God, isn't he? Praise God. Amen. Again, for the viewers that have just <clears throat> tuned in, uh, I'm Pastor Frank Churchill, and I'm from a <clears throat> Family Worship Center. My wife and I, we pastor this church, and it's uh, it's been exciting, it's been challenging, but I'm going to tell you something. God wins, right? Yes. And if God wins, guess what? We win. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Jesus already won. Yes. The battle's already won. The Bible yes. says we're more than conquerors. Yes. <clears throat> the Bible says that God has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Right. And the Bible says the devil's defeated. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible says the devil's underneath our feet. Mm -hmm. yes. We need to get that message across to all the people throughout this whole United States. <clears throat> In fact, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of word churches all over this world. Amen. Yes. And praise God. I thank God for the other ministries that have sent missionaries, started schools all over this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just thank God that we need to get excited. I know I've been asked a lot of questions about what's, what's going on here, this virus and everything. But I'm going to tell you something right now. We win. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says I've yeah. been redeemed from the curse of the law. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, you need to go back to the third chapter of uh, Galatians and read that. And study what we've been redeemed from. Yes. Yes. And the Bible says I've been redeemed from sin. I've been yes. redeemed from sickness. Yes. Poverty. And I've been redeemed from poverty. Yes. And the, the issue of life that's in Jesus, also in the Father, is in us that are born again. Yes. Something to get excited about, Praise church. God. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. I'm just I'm waiting for that day that... Uh, Everything is cleared up and everything, and everybody can come to church, not just a certain percentage or a certain group of people. But praise God, you can have church at home, amen? Yeah. Praise God. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to do that. I, I told my wife and I told some other people, I, I don't change anything on Sunday. I still get up, uh, you know, I go over my notes, I type them out or whatever, finish doing whatever, whatever I'm doing. Uh, I get my clothes ready, uh, I shower, I shave. I, I, it looks, I, I'm doing the same thing as though I'm going to go to church. Yes. Sometimes you come into church, there's nobody here, nobody here. <clears throat> I can see what Andrew Womack's going through, uh, Jesse McManus, uh, Kenneth Copeland, you're speaking to a, <clears throat> just a few amount of people. But I tell you what, God's going to win. And yes. the devil's defeated. Amen. Whatever the devil meant for harm, God's going to get the glory out of it. Amen? Yes. That's yes. good news. Amen? Yes. So everybody's listening to me here in the church or everybody's listening to us on, on Facebook Live. You ought to be hollering by now. Amen? If you're not a Pentecostal, remember, if you're watching us at home, nobody's watching you, so you can raise your hand up and do what? <laughs> huh? What can they do? They can hey, I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm a, you know, I'm a traditional whatever. Uh, Break loose. You're set free. The Bible says I inhabit the praises of my people. You need to get out there and just go to the bathroom. Maybe you don't want the kids or your husband to see you. Get up there and start jumping up and down, raising your hand up and saying hallelujah. But when you say that, well, I tell you what, things are going to happen inside of you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God's a good God. Always. I think some of you people need to, some people out there, they, they needed to hear this. Because all we're hearing from CNN, ABC, NBC is all the bad news about this virus. Yes. But I'm going to tell you something right now. My heart goes out to the people who have passed away. Yes. But the Bible says that we have authority over that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I know there's a lot of people that sing those songs about the blood of Jesus. Well, the blood of Jesus, there's life in that. Amen. And praise God. Yes. Anyhow. 
What I'm going to be talking today is I'm going to continue on teaching about eternal life. And I believe we're in part eight of this series. And so the title of the message today is Living Water. Ooh. If you don't understand what living water is, by yes. the time we get done, I think you ought to be jumping up and getting excited about the things of God. Amen. Uh, and it's been a while See. since uh, uh, <clears throat> that we haven't been able to come to church and all this other stuff. But I tell you what, it shouldn't stop if we're not having church at home. That's right. Amen. Your, your time of devotion, your time of getting up early in the morning, reading your Bible, stick with it. Read your chapter a day. Read 1 Corinthians 13. You're going to have to do it. Yep. Well, you know, I'm just sitting on the couch watching uh, uh, reruns of uh, the Super Bowl of 1938 or whatever. Well, that's fine to do that, but you got to do what? you got to put that aside and what's more important, the Word of God. It's the Word of God that's going to get you over. Yep. The answer is in Jesus Christ. Yep. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's not what ABC, uh, NBC, CBS, CNN, the, the answer's not there. Amen. No. You're not going to find an answer. You're going to find it in the Word of God. Right. Now, I want you to turn to John 3.3, 3, and that's uh, <clears throat> our main text, is John 3.3. 3. Amen? Praise God. In John 3.3, 3, it says this. Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus uh, came up to Jesus in the nighttime, and, and you know, I heard different views on that. He came at nighttime, you know, because of the position he held as a Pharisee. Uh, he was a teacher of the law, and if the Pharisees uh, saw him talking to Jesus in the daytime, you know, he might be uh, asked to not do that or, or be... Uh, taken out of the whatever office he was in. And so uh, a lot of times a lot of Christians, a lot, a lot of non-believers do that. They'll talk to somebody that's a born-again child of the living God, but they won't talk to him in public. You know, they'll, 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 yeah. they'll say, meet me at, uh, uh, at so-and-so, such a place, you know, when it's dark. Uh, remember, church, we don't have to hide our sin. Our sins have been forgiven. People out there need to hear this. That they need to hear that uh, <clears throat> you can talk to the Lord, you can talk to any Christian day or night. And, and the thing is here is, is what? Your sins have been forgiven. Amen. So <clears throat> Nicodemus came up to Jesus and said, What do I have to what do I have to do to do this and this and that? You know, he's, he's saying you're a good teacher, Jesus. And Jesus right turned around and threw this statement at him saying you have to be born again. Well look what his comment was. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? See, Jesus is talking about spiritual things, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Nicodemus is talking in the natural, right? Yes. He's talking, how can I go back into my mother's womb? Well, Jesus is not talking about that. He's talking about being born again and having eternal life. Mm -hmm. So that's what our series has been talking about, mm -hmm. eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Forever. Forever. When you die, you, you skip out of this body, you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's only a part of it. Right. You know what the other part is? You're going to have eternal life here on this earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a song that says, uh, uh, the, the sweet by and by, but when we get to heaven, we're going to have all these benefits. And no, wow. that's now. not what Jesus you said. Now. Jesus said, you can enjoy them now. Yes. Amen. God. Right now. Yeah. You can enjoy the benefits right now. <laughs> Thank God that our church believes this. When I say, well, I'm healthy and I'm strong and I'm prosperous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the four or five, eight thousand promises in the word of God are, are mine. Yes and amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to enjoy them here because when I get to heaven, guess what? You don't need them. You don't need them now. I don't need them. Yeah. I don't need them. Yeah. I'm walking on the streets of gold. I'm talking about <laughs> prosperity. Man, that banquet table. Do a research on that. Do a study on that. My God, we're going to have gold plates. Yeah. Or cups. <laughs> you think you bought it at Walmart or the dollar store? Yeah. Hey, no. I mean, I mean, I mean the walls. Mm -hmm. Just, just cook. Just do the research on the walls. One wall is diamond. The other one is pearls. Uh, topaz, rubies, yeah. and, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why enjoy the things in heaven? I, I mean, well, I gotta watch how I say this. I'm going to enjoy the things in heaven, but I can enjoy the things that are in heaven right here. 
I can have heaven on earth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't be depressed. Mm -mm. Yeah. We shouldn't be oppressed. Right. We should not worry. The Bible says to worry is to sin. Mm -hmm. So really what Jesus is throwing the whole package to Nicodemus. Nicodemus says, how can I go back into my mother's womb? This where a lot of people are right now. But praise God for preachers and, and thank God for Facebook. Thank God for what's going on all over the world. And people are getting excited about the things of God. Now, Amen. Jesus said in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen? Yeah. You'll have, th th there's only one way to get to heaven. Yeah. I, I know I'm a, <clears throat> I might be stepping on toes. Uh, other religions say, well, if you do this, and other religions say, well, if you do this. Other, other, other uh, doctrines say, well, if you do this, this will get you to heaven, being a good man, being a good moral man. Well, I tell you what, I got some bad news for you. There's only one way to get to heaven, Amen. and that's through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You're gonna find out that the other, the other stuff doesn't work. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I'm sorry about that, but Jesus Christ did a lot for us. So that we, he could give us eternal life so we can have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? In verse 6 it says this. That is which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's like a mother having a baby. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. You see the difference? Yes. The difference on contrast here? Uh, uh, it's saying uh, a mother gives birth to a baby. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that old spirit moves out and the new spirit comes in. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says you're a new creature in Christ yes, Jesus. Yes, all yes. things have passed away. Behold, all yes. things have become new. Yes. So in other words, the old yes. Frank died and the new Frank came in. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? Yes. I like to say this. It's hard to describe what you can't see the wind. No. But if the wind's blowing, you can see the result of the yes. wind. Yes. You can't see the spirit, but you can see the result of the spirit. Yes. When you become a born again child of living God, I tell you what, even your look, changes. your attitude, everything yes. changes about you because the old Frank moved out and the spirit of God dwells in you. Yes. That's eternal life. Mm -hmm. Why? Why wait until you get to heaven? Well, how come I can't walk uh, healthy, strong, and prosper? How come I can't be, how come I can't influence someone else? I like to put it this way. This was told to me many years ago, and I've experienced this. There's sometimes people will ask you, what makes you talk and act like that? They must see something that in me or in you that they lack. And you know what it is? That born again experience. Yes. Amen? Y'all yeah. remember when you got saved, right? Yeah. I mean, you walked out of that Bible study, you walked out of that church, you walked out of that camp meeting or whatever, man, boy, I tell you what, you were walking like two, three inches off the ground. Mm -hmm. You looked at the sky and it's always blue, blue to you, but it's, it's something different. Yeah. And guess what you're not carrying anymore? That's sin. That load. Hmm. Heavy load. Yeah. Your sins have been forgiven. Thank you. The Bible says they've been wiped away by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you. So whatever sin you 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 piled up or whatever, it's gone. Really, really, there's only one sin. They'll send you to hell, and that's not accepting Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Exactly. But all the stuff you did, all the violence and whatever you did when you were, when you were young and all, stealing apples and stealing oranges, stealing watermelons, stealing this or whatever, not being faithful to your spouse or whatever. If you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, boy, I tell you what, it's all forgiven. Praise God. And all of a sudden it's all gone. And the Spirit of God comes into you and you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus was trying to tell Nicodemus, but Nicodemus was a highly intelligent, smart man. He's trying to figure it out. I'm going to tell you something right now, people. You can't figure God with your knowledge up here. No, it has to be of the heart. You know, the Bible says that God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at what you're wearing. You know, he doesn't say, boy, that's a nice tie. 
you know what he's looking at? He's looking at the heart and he's looking at, he's looking at you, he's looking at the heart and he's saying this to himself. He's saying, I can use that man. I can use that young girl. I can use that young lady. You know why? Because if I tell them something, they're not going to question me. They're going to do what I tell them to do. Amen. And then the Bible says we're led by the Spirit of God. We're not led by the flesh. Amen. If you're led by the flesh and God tells you something, what's going to happen? What's going to be your reaction? Yeah. <laughs> it, not, it, it must not be God. I curse that in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. you, you know. But praise God, God is very patient. Lord. He has a long What word can I use? Long suffering, long patience. He, he, he has patience that lasts for years. Sometimes he'll wait for somebody to get born again, and he'll wait 45 years. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we can't even hold patience for two minutes. <laughs> Amen? We get upset, we get mad. You know, we went to go, uh, <clears throat> the old, we, my wife and I, we went up to a Pueblo yesterday. And when we went to the Olive Garden, because uh, we were told it, it opened up. Well, if you're hungry, really hungry, don't go to Olive Garden. Because it's gonna, you're going to spend 20 minutes outside, 20, 25 minutes outside. Mm -hmm. And that's if everybody eats and leaves. You know how people eat and talk? Well, as soon as people, because there's designated chairs, I mean tables. So uh, we waited a long time, but, uh, but I wasn't really that hungry. So by the time we waited, and by the time we got served, I was hungry. <laughs> Amen. But a lot of times we get shook up at that because we have to wait in line. My Jesus has patience that lasts for years. And he waits for you until you come into the kingdom of God or you decide, I need Jesus Christ. Praise Amen. You. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. The love of God is shed abroad in my, in my heart by the Holy Ghost. The love of God that's in God when I get born again comes into me. That's how I get to love people. Yeah. That's why we encourage you people to read mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is kind. Yes. Love is patient. Yes. What else? It's not jealous. It's not boastful. It's not jealous. It's not boastful. You, 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 you read all that. You read that every day. Mm -hmm. Guess who you're going to be looking like? If you start reading your word, you start reading 1 Corinthians 13, all of a sudden, guess what? You start acting like the enemy. And all of a sudden, somebody cuts you off, and boy, you're out there doing this, this, and that. So Nicodemus had a good teaching. Very simple and to the point. I believe Nicodemus got saved. I don't, I don't know. You know, you know I, I, I believe because he said, he told Jesus, you have to be the son of God for all the miracles that you're doing. All he's saying is, how do I get into your staff? Or how do I get into being a believer? And Jesus told him. But now, just like anyone else, guess what you have to do now? You're going to have to decide whether to accept him, give up the old life, yeah. give up that position, yeah. give up that doctrine that, well, that's been taught you that wasn't right, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I tell you what, a lot of us, a lot of us, millions, billions of us, have made the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. <clears throat> Let's go to John the fourth chapter. We're going to go to John the fourth chapter. Amen. God's a good God, isn't He? Oh, we all need to good. And before I get that, I've been talking to you a lot about eternal life. That eternal life, uh, well, let me put it this way. There's a lot of churches, and, and, and we teach it too. We ask people to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so that if anything happens to you, you die, and you die early or whatever. You'll end up in heaven. That's true. And a lot of people talk about that but that's not the end of the story. No. Uh, a lot of people get saved. They're saying, uh, I've heard people say this to me, well, at least I don't get to go to hell. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus the rest of my life. <clears throat> they put a period after salvation. That's not what it says. Let's go to John 3.16. 
Let's go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. In other words, go to hell. But what? See, a lot of people say, well, I got born again. I'm not going to hell. And they put a period there. They didn't read the whole scripture. It says, but that, <clears throat> but have everlasting life. What's everlasting life? Knowing who Jesus Christ is. Knowing who God is. Knowing who the Holy Ghost is. And you can have it here on this earth before you leave so you can be effective and teach someone else. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Praise God. God God's, God's a good God. Eternal life is living forever, but that's not, that's not the whole case. You know, we've had relatives die recently, and, and I know they stepped out of their body for whatever reason. They're in heaven. They're walking the streets of gold. But we're still here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We ought to be the most joyful people on this earth. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm not moved with what I see, hear, or feel. Mm -hmm. Be steadfast in the faith. Mm -hmm. No one ceases to exist when they die. You don't. Uh, the Bible says it's been appointed us to die one time. We die one time. But like I said in other previous uh, uh, messages, we'll never taste death. Mm -mm. We won't even smell death. We just step out of this body, and like one minister put it, he put it this way. He said, by the time you get to heaven, it might take you a couple minutes to realize that you're not in your body anymore. You died, and you're in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Everlasting life is a present tense possession. Live the God kind of life on this earth as a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. With this virus, with this rioting that's going all over the country, don't act like them. I like what Brother Copeland said. My wife was reading the story to me. Pray for those people mm -hmm. because they're being influenced by another spirit mm -hmm. and they're not being influenced by God. No. Right. Do you understand that? Right. But I also see it as this. Those are the signs for the second coming of our Lord Jesus yes. Christ because he yes. said there would be rumors of war. I mean, every uh, upheaval that's coming up. Uh, Satan, he knows, he knows his time is short. So right. he's putting all this stuff, he's throwing all this stuff at people. And if you don't recognize it, you'll go, oh my God, that, that was bad what that individual did. No, 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 no. You turn it around and say, you know what, Father God, the devil meant that for harm, but I'm gonna tell you what, we're gonna pray. The Christians are gonna give up, to, come up together and say, you know what, Lord Jesus Christ, we're gonna stand with you regardless of what we see, hear, or feel. Amen. That's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't moved by anything. He was moved by what the word and what the Father told him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Praise God. God's a good God. Amen? All the time. All the time. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But salvation is much, much more than getting our sins forgiven so we can go to heaven instead of hell. I like to put it this way. Everlasting life is get to know who God is yes. and know Jesus and know the Holy Ghost. Amen. Get to know him personally, up close and personal, I could say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get saved and they go, well, I guess I can go back and do whatever I want to do because my sins have already been forgiven, so what the heck? Nope. No, they need to be taught. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You can't act like the old friend and get the benefits of everything that God has for you. You can't do that. You gotta stay right there. You gotta you got be steadfast in the things of God no matter what's thrown at you. Amen. Get your shield of faith and go bang, bang, bang. Those thoughts of adultery, bang. Uh, those thoughts of fornication, bang. Those, those thoughts of poverty, bang. The, yeah. the lying thought, boom, the bad dreams yeah. and, and all that stuff. You just put your shield out there and say, no devil, you're not gonna touch this mind because this mind belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? amen. And I, I have control over that. Yes. Yes. God doesn't make me, but I have control of what I think and what I say. That's, right. yeah. That's sometimes when people get shook up or whatever they tell me things. Sometimes I listen for a little while, then I kind of walk away. You know what? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What did David do when he was in trouble? Went to the Lord. What did he do? He went to the Lord. He went to the Lord and did what? He sang and played. He sang and he played, and what else did he do? 
He lifted himself up. He encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. That's what you're going to have to do in this time of hour. Yeah. Don't sit there in front of that TV set for four hours listening to CNN. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Amen. Don't do it. I turn it on sometimes just to see what they're saying. I say, well, that's a bunch of baloney. I shut it off. Yeah. I put, I'd rather listen to just Judy. You know? <laughs> uh, but praise God. Likewise, when Jesus said eternal life was knowing God, he was speaking of having an intimate, close, personal relationship with God. That's awesome. Yes. You know why you need to know who my God is? Because the life of God that's in him. Now listen to this. When you got saved, when you received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, that life that was in him came into you. It was yes. deposited into you. Yes. So if he's called the bread of life, and he's called the tree of life, and he's called the river of life, We have life. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What in the heck is in you? Amen. And then people say, well, I don't want to jump down and up and down. You know, I'm not Pentecostal like oh, Pastor Frank. You know, he's crazy and all this stuff. No, I'm not. <laughs> if he's the tree of life, if he's the river of life, he's the bread of life. He is life. He is life. And that's what makes his existence continue. And you got born again. What did he deposit into you? Now watch this, watch this, watch this. The Spirit of God just showed me this. When he created Adam, the body was just laying there and he was lifeless, right? Yes. Who breathed into him? The Lord. The tree of life? Yes. The bread of life? Life yes. itself. The blood of life? Yes. Life itself. What happened to the body of Adam? There was only one thing to do. He came alive. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys get a hold of that. Uh, Why do you walk around with tears and sorrow and bitterness and distress and, and being this, 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 and that? People come up. My wife just recently talked to me. She goes, doesn't anything move you? Uh, I mean, aren't you concerned about this and that? What happens if nobody shows up for church when they open the doors and, and all the people can come back into church? You know, all the four or five billion people can come back to church. And then I go, I'll tell you what, if we open the doors and only four people show up, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to feel just like I am right now. Amen. You know why? Because you got to be steadfast in the faith. Right. Have that God kind of faith. Because it takes faith to believe the tree of life, the bread of life, the river of life, the water of life that's in Jesus is in me. And how do I hear it? How, how do I hear it? Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing, hearing and hearing. By the word of and guess what? You have to read the word of God. I, I, I sometimes I get my Bible out or I, I see it on, on the computer and I read it. Get to know God. You know what God means in the Greek and the Hebrew and whatever languages and whatever dictionaries? Get close and personal with him. He's the answer. Don't run away from him. Amen. Run to him. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. That's why I can say I'm happy and I'm strong and I'm, and, and I'm prosperous. Yes. Amen. Praise God. God's a good God. Some people are just waiting. Well, I'll just wait for the sweet by and by. Well, he may be waiting a long time. I want it. I want it here. Yes. I want it now. Yeah. And you Praise it now. God. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Now, this is serious now. Uh, if it affects you, just keep a straight face. It's not here. I, I'm not here to to condemn you or, or to knock you down, but it's to wake you up yes. because this virus has put a lot of people in the sleeping mode. Right. So, yeah. 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 Have you ever had trouble with your computer and it goes to sleep? Yeah. 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 So do we. <laughs> We're walking around Walmart with one like that. <laughs> Spiritually. Yeah. The Bible says, even though we walk and we breathe, we walk around like a dead man. Remember, don't forget about the tree of life, the bread of life, the, the, the river of life, uh, the, the, everything that's in Jesus 
from God that makes them exist is in you. Yeah. Man, those are good news. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it That's is. good news. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I know sometimes people get all chewed up sometimes while walking around and I'm jumping up and down. I was eating, I was eating at the, uh, at the, at the, at the uh, Olive Garden, and, and I, I, I get my, uh, I get my favorite food. Uh, this is what I call it. I call it Fredo, Alfredo, Alfredo, <laughs> Fudicini or whatever. <laughs> I tore it apart. And you guys know what I'm talking about. I like that. I like that. a lot of cream on it. And the bread sticks. Oh, man. sometimes they give that butter. Oh man, look at that butter. And, and, and I, I was done. I, I had eaten about a quarter of my food, and I got out of the booth. And, and right in the middle of the aisle, I went like this, and, and, and the people that were eating with us said, what are you doing? I said, I want the food to settle down in my stomach <laughs> so I can have extra food, extra space to eat. I was hungry. But I tell you what, I, I tell you what I'm going to show you about that. That's what we have to do. Because the Bible says in heaven, in the book of Revelation, that the river of life flows from the throne. Yeah. Now, if you're a born again child of living God, that river ought to flow out of you to attract other people. If the people who are thirsty and hungry, physically, I mean spiritually, will say, Denise, what makes you? Yeah. What makes you tick? So I went over there and I said, man, this food is good. I don't want to take it home because I don't like sacking that much, you know. Uh, you know, I do too. That, that kind of food. Yeah, because yeah. you leave there for 24 days and the fish take it out, it's kind of hard, you know. Like, I, I, like, I like the sauce. <laughs> so, so I ate about half and, and, and I stepped out again and I went like that. And uh, our server came in and he looked at me, you know, he had the mask on and everything. He looked at me. And I go, well, I'm good to settle down. Oh, so you can eat more. See, he caught on. <laughs> well, that's how we have to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we have to be. Yeah. What yeah. makes me tick? What makes you tick? Thick. You go like this and go, man, I got a lot of work today. You don't want to settle down. Boy, I need some more. Give me some more of that living water. Give me some of that bread of life. Yeah. Give me some of that life, Father God. Yeah. Blow it into me. Yeah. Yeah. Fill me. Fill me. Who has to do that? You have to do it. Yeah. I can't do it for you. I can pray for you, and that's about it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, Amen. I said all that to say this. Go to John, the fourth chapter, <laughs> and starting with verse 5. Now, you all you're, you're with me on this? I hope, I hope everybody's with me on this. I said all that, that was, everything I said was introduction to what we're going to say here. Jesus, in the fourth chapter, starting with verse 5, then Jesus came he, to the city of Samaria. And uh, verse 5, verse 6 says, now Jacob's well was there. So he had traveled. He was tired. He was thirsty. Yes. He was hungry in the physical realm. The physical. Okay? Physical, yes. Now, uh, in verse 6, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being worried in his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So that was around noon. Yep. Verse 7 says, And here comes a woman Samaritan. of Samaria to draw water. Right away, Jesus forgot how thirsty he was. I don't know if you ever thought about that. All of a sudden, he forgets that he's not hungry anymore. And he asked the woman, give me to drink. The wells were deep. Mm -hmm. You needed a long rope. Mm -hmm. You needed a, a bucket mm -hmm. to draw the cool water out. Mm -hmm. He knew that. But he says, give me something to drink. In other words, I like the way God does things. Sometimes he'll ask you a question to get you to think. Mm -hmm. Because the Samaritan woman did what? She started to think. Well, it seems to me, the way you dress, the way you talk, your accent, 
you act like a Jew, mm -hmm. and the Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. And you're asking me to give you water? You talk about prejudice. That's right there. You talk about being prejudiced, man, this thing goes back years. What's happening in our country? Depending on the tone of your skin, the color tone of your skin, sometimes gets you a better job than some other people. That should never be. Amen? That's what I say. When you're a born again child, living God, remember you're blessed and you're highly favored. And God will bless you with, 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 with the opportunity that nobody else can give you. Amen? Amen? Praise God. He's always looking. Uh, what matters to Jesus is the condition of your heart. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Now, verse 8, for his disciples gone away unto the city to buy what? Food. Food. Verse 9, then said the woman at Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. She brings it up. Amen? Do you think that bothered Jesus? No. no. Let's go to the next verse, 10. Jesus answers it unto her. Well, here she wants to, she wants to start a little, a, like a conversation. You're a Jew, I'm Samaritan. We don't like each other, we hate each other's guts. You know what, you know what one translation says? that the Samaritans would not even eat food out of the same dish that the Jews had. They were considered dogs. That's how much prejudice there was. Mm -hmm. And look, look at in our country. See, that's all the work of the enemy. That's not yes. the work of God. Yes. Jesus answered unto her, if thou know the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me to drink, He's saying what? If you only knew the individual that is asking you for a drink of water of who I am. Yeah. You would ask me. Yeah. Now you would ask me for a drink. Of living water. Yes. In other words, he's setting her up, right? Because she she already has a mental thought here. He's a Jew, I'm Samaritan, we don't like each other. And sometimes when you're witnessing to people, it doesn't take long for you to figure out whether they're going to listen to you or not. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You can continue on if you want to, and then after a while, the Spirit of God might just tell you, leave that individual alone. They're not ready to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, so leave them alone. Doesn't mean you can't pray for them, but you can't shove it down their throats. Yeah. Amen. That's what a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse uh, 11. I like verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Again, she forgot what Jesus said. If you're thirsty, you could ask me for a drink of water. I'll give you water that you'll never thirst, and I'll give you something you'll never hunger for. Mm -hmm. When you get to heaven, mm -hmm. when you get to heaven, you don't have to drink anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't have to eat anymore. There's no more sorrow. There's no crying. There's no pain. Uh-uh. How'd you like to live in that kind of a culture? How'd you like to live in that kind of an environment? In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what makes you really close and intimate, in, intimate with him is you knowing who he is mm -hmm. here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Amen? And I believe there's, yeah. people, there's certain people that are going to make it to heaven, but I believe they're going to be taught certain things about the Lord Jesus Christ, like, like a, a, anything else. When you go see an important individual, there's a protocol how to approach the individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not learn it here? Yeah, that's right. I can't teach you everything. There's nobody that can teach you everything about the Lord Jesus Christ, but they can teach you enough that you can get a hold of. And then she says this, she said, well, then give me something. Give me that living water. But she's thinking, she's thinking in the natural now. She's thinking, if I have to, if I have this living water you're talk, talking about, and I don't have to thirst anymore, then I don't have to hold these jugs 
can't get water. <laughs> Four cloths filled with water and then take them back. She's, she's still thinking Carnal. natural. Mm -hmm. He's thinking spiritual. spiritual. But when she said, give me Living. of this living water, you know, watch this. Jesus must have said enough that it cost that woman to start asking questions. If we have this life of God in us, people should, don't be surprised when people ask you a question or they'll ask you, what church do you go to? How many churches are right now? These mega churches? I've asked individuals, what's your pastor's name? They go, I don't know, but he's a good preacher. <laughs> and then I'll go, what did he preach on Sunday? Uh, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> you're in church, you're listening, you're a Christian, but here's what's happening. You're not really paying attention to what's going on. If there's a Bronco game at, at, at 2 o'clock, pastor better, be, better hurry up so people can get out at 12 o'clock, 12.30 so they can run and go get their food and take it home be ready for the game. And I'm not knocking sports up. I, I enjoy sports. But I'm going to tell you something. Nothing should take Amen. the place, uh -uh. The yes. place yes. of my Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And this woman, this woman here, is asking a lot of questions. Something had to happen to her spiritually. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And then the disciples come back and they go, how come you talking to her? What did the disciples learn? They learned something about prejudice that was still in them. Jesus had to get rid of that. How, after I leave, Jesus said, after I leave, how in the heck, how can you go out there and minister to people being prejudiced That's by right. Samaritans? That's right. Yeah. I leave you with this. Keep your heart clean because my Lord looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. My God doesn't look at what you've done or didn't do. He looks at the condition of the heart. Mm -hmm. He looks at you. Who knows your heart? A man may say this, a husband may say this, I've been married to this woman for 40 years, I know everything about her. Not really. That's right. You know when she's hungry, you know when she wants something, you know the favorite color, this, this, and that. That's nice to know. That, that, that cuts because you have an intimate relationship with your wife. But when it comes to knowing the heart, mm -hmm. that's a step a little bit higher than only God knows. Mm -hmm. Can I use you, Kelly? Can I use you? Can I use you? Can I use you? Can I use you? Sometimes we nod our heads, but we never do anything. We have to get in the position. We have to get in, 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 in the right place at the right time. Say, Lord, use me. Use me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 God's a good God, isn't he? Always. He can only be good. We, we have an unlimited resource to God. Because the thing, that, the thing that's with God is in us. Amen. Oh my God, you people ought to be jumping up and down and hollering, screaming, and running all over the place. We got to get this message across to the people. But first of all, I believe this, and again, people may disagree with me, everybody has their own opinion, ego, whatever. I think people have to see Jesus in you. Yes. Why was Jesus attracted to so many people? Because the love, he had. Mm -hmm. all that love that was in him because of the Father came out and people were attracted to him like a magnet. Yeah. And this time, the way the United States is, is in right now, man, we need a lot of God's love not the love of the world. All we need is a little love. You know, give me a little love. No. 
That's not true. They need the love of God, but they need to see it in you. Amen? Amen. 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 If they can't see it in you, watch this. If they can't see the love in you, then there's something wrong about you knowing who my God is. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank God that we're born again. Amen. For my viewers out there, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. There's only one way to get to heaven. Right. But don't use it just to, to prevent you from going to hell. Get to know who my Lord Jesus Christ is. Get to know him personally up close. Get to know him. Amen. You know why? The more you know him, he has, a, he has the answers to every problem that you have. Yes. Yes. You sleep better. You think yes. better. You act better. You know why? Yes. Because the life of God, the tree of life, the bread of life, the river of life, everything that's in the Lord that makes him exist is in you. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. You, that's why we're more than conquerors. Yes. That's why the devil can't defeat us. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise God. So, some of you need to really think about what we said today. Yeah. You really, you really not only think about it, you need to apply it in your life mm -hmm. every day from this day forth. Mm -hmm. And say, I'm not going to let anything distract me from the Spirit of God. Yeah. Even if I had to bite my tongue, Stay with my lips. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm going to worship the Lord. And there's one thing that my wife said, and I'll, and I'll finish with this. And, and my wife's good at this. She said, during this time and every time, not just this time, you need to praise the Lord. Yeah. Me, I like this song. I raise a hallelujah. I heard the song on the radio. And I put it on full blast as much as I could. I read the hallelujah. <laughs> I don't care what people think. You know, I'm driving on you know, my pickup, and, and a favorite song comes up, I like, and I'm going like this, I'm tapping. You know, I, I've done this. I've tapped my hands on the steering wheel, you know, at the intersection of whatever, when I was going to Las Angeles High School. And people look at you, and you go, ooh. You're not showing up. You're praising God. And I think some of you need to praise God and worship God a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Audience, I thank you very much for listening to us. We're going to continue on doing this every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen.